The beauty of the British countryside is one of the United Kingdom's most favoured attractions. A survey by Steam showed that in 2018 alone, 19.38 million tourists flocked to the Lake District. Undoubtedly, it is the peace, beauty and tranquility of the lakes that attract people to Cumbria. But who is there to help if it all goes wrong? In the interest of public health, COVID-19 has consistently held us hostage in our homes, keeping the beauty of the outdoors at bay. Over a year of restrictions has went by and there is finally some light at the end of the tunnel. When the restrictions end and the floodgates reopen, it is the job of Penrith Mountain Rescue Team to save the people in need. Penrith Mountain Rescue Team is a volunteer-led charity, part of the Lake District Search and Mountain Rescue Association. PMRT are on call 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, covering the largest area within the association, stretching from the Scottish border in the north to High Cup Nick in the south. Penrith Mountain Rescue Team is an invaluable emergency service with professional training to cover a variety of situations. With a team of over 40 members, ranging from probationers to team leaders, PMRT are on call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, risking their own lives, regardless of the conditions, to help those people in need. Based on the annual report by the Lake District Search and Mountain Rescue Association, the vast majority of the activities that led to rescue callouts was hill walking, an activity that is often underestimated. After analysis from the five most recent reports by the Lake District Search and Mountain Rescue Association, between the years of 2013 and 2018, the most common reason for a callout was falling or disorientation. Some of this risk can be lowered with suitable preparation and sensible decision making. Despite COVID restrictions heavily limiting travel, Penrith Mountain Rescue Team had 37 callouts in 2020, voluntarily risking their own lives. The charity wouldn't be operational without donations entirely funding the team's equipment and operations. To gain a deeper understanding of Penrith Mountain Rescue Team and the amazing work that they do, here is an interview with a long-term member. Uh, my name is Rob Holden. I've been in Penrith Mountain Rescue Team, um, I think about 21 years now, uh, and I'm the team leader at the moment. Probably like most people, um, I've spent my life outdoors, doing outdoor stuff, outdoor activities, and wanted to put a little bit back into it. Um, also, there's a lot of skills that you learn. It's, it's, it's a good group of friends, um, and it's, it's just a, a good organisation to be in. You, know, you, you get a good feeling of that you've achieved something. Um, and you learn a lot of new skills. It's, it's a constant learning of skills, which is good. So Penridge Malta Rescue Team was, was set up um, just over 60 years ago, um, basically to relieve suffering and rescue people in the fells um, and in remote places within Cumbria. Uh, within the team, we've got a few different sections. We've got um, crag work groups, we've got water task groups, We've got um, search groups, we've got medical groups, we've got fundraising groups, we've got a vehicle and base group. When speaking to Rob, he told me about one of his most memorable rescues with PMRT, which was an eight hour operation to save an ice climber. The team received a call out to rescue an ice climber high above Bleewater Downfall, who had fallen and suffered a suspected broken back while still suspended from the rope. Coast Guard helicopter was dispatched, however due to high winds it could not safely extract the climber. As a result of this, PMRT with the help of neighbouring teams climbed 300 to 400 feet up the frozen waterfall in the dead of night in the middle of winter. Upon arrival, the team got the casualty into a vac mat, acting as a full body splint to support the broken back. The casualty was then placed on a stretcher and passed hand in hand down the terrain to a safe evacuation site where the Coast Guard helicopter would take it to the nearest hospital. Although the casualty had suffered a broken back, they made a full recovery with his life indebted to the mountain rescue teams. This multi-agency, life-saving operation would not have been possible without the donations to the charity, providing them with the resources they need to make the lakes safe for everybody. We're desperately um, in need of a new base. We've completely outgrown our old base. Um, 
I think with, with Manta Rescue developing, especially Swift Water Rescue, the amount of equipment and the amount of training that takes place has, has increased massively. And our base, which was kind of purpose built in the early 90s, I think it was one of the first purpose built Manta Rescue bases in the country. It's now woefully inadequate and it's just way too small. So we are looking for some land in, in which we want to, to build on. Um, we're also going to share the premises with Comrie, which is Comrie or Mine Rescue Unit. And together we're going to fundraise to try and um, build the base. When the floodgates are open, everyone returns to the lake, you know, we need to be ready, we need to be trained. Um, so that, that is our biggest issue. Also not being able to meet has, has kind of affected the morale of the team. Yes, we only have one person in each vehicle and everyone else goes direct in their own cars. You're maintaining social distance. At the end of a call out, we quarantine all the kit in the vehicles that we use for three days, you know, the 72 hours. So then, so we don't go near anything like that. We obviously swab everything down. We wear full PPE. The difficulty of, of using PPE, you know, personal protective equipment, uh, to defend against COVID in the mountain environment is, is a big issue. And I think that's why all mountain rescue teams have been urging people to stay off the hills because the PP is not effective. You know, and and if, if we have to go to people on a call out, then it does present lots of issues and it increases risk of, of contamination for us and our families. I've been a big interest in people holidaying in England, well, in the United Kingdom, because people can't go abroad. And we are, actually, we're, we are having an increased number of call outs for people who are lacking experience and knowledge of the mountains. So it's really important that you look at the weather forecast, you look at what equipment you carry in, and you basically um, exercise within areas which, which you are in control, which you, which you are safe with. Um, so if you've never been up a mountain before, it wouldn't be very wise to go up a mountain in poor weather with zero visibility. So learn to map read. Uh, if you can't map read, then um, go with somebody who can. So just stay within your skill set. Don't push yourselves. If the weather's turning nasty, don't risk it, turn back. And make sure you, you've got full waterproofs, hats, gloves, um, you know, the usual stuff that um, people would ex we would expect to have on the mountains. There's a very good app called Adventure Smart UK, which spells out, basically it, it runs you through a day in the mountains and all the equipment you should take, all the weather forecasts, all the things you need to consider. So Adventure Smart UK is, is a very good resource for people planning a day in the mountains. Thanks to the invaluable work of rescue teams like PMRT, the lakes can be enjoyed by all. Please use the Adventure Smart resources to adequately prepare for your activities. To help keep the team operational, please consider donating to help them help others. No matter the size of your donation, it will make a difference. Thank you for watching.